Hi, this video is about how you can use S3 as for your source code. As you may know, we did in the past a video about virtual file systems, what included S3, so how you can use virtual file systems in Lucy. And this is an example how you can use S3 for your artifacts. When we look at the source code itself, you see we have here directly S3 resource, an image, and we define the MIME type. And when we call that in the browser, you see we get the image. In that case, we define the credential of the S3 resource in the application CFC. This are of course dummy data. You don't have to try if you can use them. They're, they're are fake. But you could also define the credential for the S3 resource with the pass itself. When you do it that way, you, def you have the, the access key and the secret key, you added it that way to the to the pass, and that would work as well. So you don't have to define it in the application CFC. But if you have an exception and you you show the exception on the on the page, you will expose this information on the page. So if you do it that way, never ever use an error template that shows the exception. Best thing is you never use the credentials with the pass itself. Always define it in the application CFC. That way you way you are sure you never show the credentials. So that is how you can use S3 for your artifacts. But how you can use S3 for your source code? You can define a mapping in the admin, but that exposes the credential as well. So when you go to the Lucy administrator, you go to the page mappings. There you can define uh, the virtual path, what is S3, or of course, whatever you want. And then you define your S3 resource. But of course, there's no application CFC where you can define your credentials. So you have to define the credentials with the um, resource itself. So, so you have something like this. But again, that would expose your credentials to to every to everybody that sees the exception message. So you better when you do it that way, don't expose the exception message to the user. But there's a better way. You can set the credentials and the environment variables of your server or, or in the system properties. This is a new feature in that version of the extension S3. So for example, with Tomcat, you have a file called setenv.sh. That file is located in the binary directory. If that file is not there, simply create it. It should look that way. I add new um, system environment variables. One is called lucy.s3.accesskeyid with the access key. Again, that's a dummy key. And then I have lucy.s3.secret key with the secret key dummy. And um, that way Lucy will pick that up. So, but you can of course overwrite that when you define the key in the application CFC or or they're directly with the pass. But when you don't have defined it in the application CFC or with the pass, Lucy will pick this information. Now that we have that in the environment variables, you have to restart the server that Lucy picks that up. But now that we have it, we can remove the credentials here and simply define S3 for that virtual pass. We define the S3 resource. In that case, we have S3 CFML1. I store that mapping. Now we have two important things in the mapping. For, first of all, we have the flag web accessibility. That means that you expose that mapping to the, directly to the user. So you can call it in the browser. You can call slash S3 in the browser and pick it up. When you remove that flag, you only can include that mapping. So with a CF include slash S3. But that way, now we expose it. The other very important thing is that we cache the result. By default, Lucy will check that has the source file changed, we called. And of course, if, if, if it checks that for S3, that takes some time to check it. And in that case, best thing is go to never. So Lucy will pick up the, 
the file on the first request from S3. It will compile the file to a local folder. Then it will only use that local compiled file and never check again if that file has changed. So it in that case it doesn't make a difference if that file comes from locally or for us three you have the same performance so we set it to, to never store it now we can go to the browser and simply add that url so we have s3 for the mapping then index.cfm and we get the source from from S3, that file looks like this. So you have have some static stuff and some dynamic stuff comes directly from S3. But because we are caching that, it will not pick up a change. So let's say we change that file a little bit. Then I update the file on S3. And now I'm calling it again in the browser. You see it has not picked up the change because it's cached. What we now can do is flush the change with help of the function page pool clear. That will clear the complete page pool and Lucy will pick up that file new. When we call that and execute it again, you see it has picked up the change. So you have a cache and you can flash the cache manually if you add new files to the to S3. You can of course that automate that step by having for example a schedule a task that checks every every 5 minutes or whatever if there is any change on S3 and if so flash everything or it flashes once an hour or whatever. I hope this video was helpful to you. Have a good one.